Good evening, family. You're most welcome to our midweek service, and it's, a, it's an honor to uh, have fellowship with you, to spend time in the Word of God together, and I'm, I'm glad that uh, Adria is able to sort out the things that was not working, and we have great worship with her and our friends today as well. Uh, so I want us to pray and jump right into the Word together, so shall we pray? Precious Father, we say thank you for loving us. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for uh, the month that is gone and this new month we've entered into. I'm committed to you. Pray that you guide, pray that you teach, pray that you lead, and that your blessing be upon us even as we journey through this new month. And even as we spend time in your word right now, Father, I yield to you. Pray that you have the freedom to speak through me. Pray that you speak to each one of us. I thank you for all those who are watching right now. Thank you for all those who are even going to be watching after this. That, Lord, you bless them, that you speak to them, that you encourage them, and, and just use this word to bring a change in their life, all for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we're in First Peter. We're starting through the book of First Peter. And so, First Peter chapter 1, I read from verse 13 through to 16. And we started together, and this is what it says. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that, is, that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it's written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So, we're starting through this book of First Peter, a very great book. I hope you've already learned something just in the passages we've covered from verse 1 through to verse 12 uh, last week. And today we're going to look at living a life with a difference. And, and, and these verses we've just read has some great insight on that. How do we live life with a difference? And the reason for this title, the reason uh, for, for this passage as we're starting through is, you see, for many people, they're living life in passing. They're, they're living life as it comes. They're living life just like other people are living, doing things because other people are doing it. Uh, so literally they're tossed this way and that way by every wave of the winds and decisions that the world brings and just how people are living. But as believers, this life that we're supposed to live as people who belong to God, people who've been called, people who are being kept for eternity, people who have inheritance, kept and guarded by God himself, our life should be different, the way we live our life, the things we do, how we conduct ourselves, how we handle things should be different. And I pray and hope that these verses and this sermon today will encourage you and remind you of that life that you need to live. So, how do we live a life with a difference? The first thing that the Peter mentioned in verse 13, <coughs> excuse me, helps us look at how he phrases this verse it says therefore look at what it says preparing your mind for action so if we're going to live a life with a difference if we're going to be people whose life matters whose who are advocating for things of god things for eternity things that it's not just for ourselves not just for now but things that will survive the test of time says you need to prepare for action prepare for action you see if you're not ready to take a stand for anything, you're not going to make a difference. Your life is not even going to be meaningful. If you're not ready to take a stand, and I say this because if you're not willing to take a stand, if there's nothing important in your life that you're willing to fight for, you're willing to stand for, then you're going to be everywhere. But how do we do that? You say it's Prepare for action, but how do we prepare for action? He says, by girding your mind. Have your mind girded. And the original verse actually have it, girding the loins of your mind. That's, that's what he says. And, and I want us to know this, that for us to prepare for action, we'll take discipline. It takes discipline. You're going to have to be a disciplined person. You're going to have to be... Someone who is willing to stay true to the course is going to take sacrifice. You see, 
The reason why not everyone is doing what you're doing, the reason why not many people are making a difference is because they're not willing to make the sacrifice, take the sacrifice that that it's required, that is involved in doing what needs to be done. And as believers, if we're going to live for God, if we're going to live for things that matters, if we're going to stand for the truth, if we're going to minister, proclaim, and be in this world a light shining in the dark, we'll have to be willing to make sacrifice. And part of the sacrifice might be you being willing to let go of everything that everyone else might be enjoying. Something that even you yourself might feel like, oh, I wish I could have that. But because you know as a child of God, as a minister of the gospel, as someone who is living to live a legacy, you know that that does not add to achieving of that. That whatever it is you probably wanted to do, whatever it is your friends are doing, whatever it is others might be enticing you to do, you know, yes, that might sound good, but it's not good for me. Just because others are doing it does not mean I need to do it. You let it go. It also takes priority. Prepare for action. How? Disciplining yourself, making the sacrifice necessary, and prioritizing what needs to be done. Therefore, he says, preparing your minds for action. Preparing your mind for action. Are you ready? Because the term that Peter uses here is, is a term, it's a military term. It's like you already see the enemy is coming. You've heard the enemy is coming. Are you ready for the action? Are you ready to face them? Do you have what it takes? Have you prepared? Have you trained? Have you, do you have the weapons necessary? And that's the same kind of word that Peter uses here. He says prepare your mind for action. That means you need to be ready at all times because you don't know when the enemy is coming. You don't know when you might be be required to act or respond to something. So it says, be ready, prepare. That's how you live the life with a difference. That you are prepared at all times. See, that that's the reason why Paul, as he wrote to Timothy, says, be prepared in season and out of season. Be ready at all times because you don't know when you might need to preach the gospel. You don't know when you might need to present the gospel. You don't know when you might need to defend the gospel. You don't know when you might actually be sharing the gospel without knowing it. So it says, be prepared at all times. Peter says here, prepare. And this intentionality there. Be intentional. Prepare for action. But the second thing that helps us live our life with a difference, if we're not just going to be people who are feeding in the world there, says be sober-minded. Be sober-minded. And, and the word used there to describe the sober-mindedness is in a present continuous tense. It says being sober-minded should be an ongoing action, should be a constant thing that you are always sober-minded. And that means you're abstaining from all intoxication. But the actual word means you're being watchful. You're being alert. See, you do not know when the enemy will strike. You do not know when the battle is going to begin. Because as believers, we're constantly in a battle. And that's why Peter, in the same book, later on in chapter 5, verse 8, he says, Be watchful, be alert. Why? Because your enemy... The devil, he says, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone he might devour. But as for you, he says, stand firm in your faith. And Peter there actually begins with the word, be sober-minded. Do you see the reason? If you're going to leave a legacy, if your life is going to stand for something, mean something in the kingdom of God, in the gospel ministry, in this world, Says, be sober-minded, be alert, be watchful, be prepared at all times. Because you might be resting, you might be relaxing, but the enemy is not. 24-7, the enemy is not sleeping. While we sleep, while we are resting, he's not sleeping. So it says, be sober-minded, be alert, be watchful. Don't be distracted by anything. Don't let anything takes you away from the course that you're following. 
set your mind on it. The third thing we see that will help us live this life in a different way. Life that brings glory and honor to God. Let God's grace be your hope. I want to say that again. Let God's grace be your hope. And look at how Peter puts it. So he says, Set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let the grace of God be your hope. You see, for this to happen, don't rely on yourself, friends, because you're going to fail. Don't listen to what the world is saying. Don't listen to the thinking of the world because the things of the world is contrary to the things of God. Don't even let your current circumstances determine your response to God or make you believe something about God that is not true. Let the grace of God be your hope. And I want to say this. When nothing seems to make sense in your life, I want you to remember this. Remember the grace that saved you. When nothing seems to make sense in your life, remember the grace that saved you. Because it's that very grace that is sustaining you. That is where your hope should be built, should be found. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. So when circumstances is contrary, reports might be saying, well, this is not good. The result might be saying, this is not good. The media might be saying, this is not good. Your family and friends might be saying, this is bad. But don't let that become your reality. Go to God. Remember the grace that saves you. That's the grace that sustained you. The God who sent His Son to die for you while you were still dead and lost in your sins and transgression. It's the same God who is your Father. It's the same God who is watching over you. Let the grace of God be your hope so that you're standing firm, so that you're not shaken in your faith, in your trust, in your determination, in the call that God has placed upon your life. Because the moment we lose faith, the moment we lose hope, then we've lost everything. And we praise God that the Bible tells us that hope does not disappoint. Why? Because God has poured His love into our hearts. How? Through His Holy Spirit who indwells us. Same Spirit through whom we now cry, Abba, Father. Let that hope remain. Let the grace of God be your hope. Because that is constant. Because sorrow may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Darkness may linger still, but there's sunrise the next day. The night might be very dark, but you know that the new day is dawning. The storm might be very strong, but you know there's going to be sunrise at the end of it. The, the tunnel might be very dark. You might not see anything, but there's light at the end of that tunnel. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. Don't break. Let the grace of God be your hope. And I will see the first thing that helps us live lives that makes a difference wherever we are. Is we need to remember this. This is the fourth one. Remember that obedience leads to transformation. Remember that obedience leads to transformation. So listen to what Peter says. Verse 14. He says, as obedient children. Okay? As obedient children. So if you're obeying, then something is going to happen. As obedient children, look at what it says. Do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. As obedient children. So, if you're obeying, then it says there's transformation. If you're obeying, then you are actually not leaving the life you just live. You've changed. So, obedience brings about transformation. What kind of transformation? Obedience brings about this transformation. One, we are transformed from our former self. We are no longer who we used to be. 
Because the moment you believed in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were born again. And the Bible tells us, we read this in the previous verses, it says, we praise God who has caused us to what? To be born again. That's the same God who saved us. That's the same God who, through His power who brings about this transformation we're talking about. So, obedience to God, the same God who has called you and saved you. Obeying Him, responding to Him, yielding to Him, that's something that it changes you. From your former self, the sinful disobedient you, to renewed life from the dead you to a living you because before Jesus Christ we were dead and lost but now that we're in Christ we're alive another transformation that takes place it's from ignorance to knowledge because it says you're not going to be conformed do not conform to the passions of what of your former ignorance so that means in obedience to God, in response to God, and the beginning of this obedience is we're saying it's you obeying when you heard the gospel of your salvation and believed. When you heard the Bible says God loves you, Jesus Christ his son died for you, and you obeyed and said yes. When he says here I am, do you believe me? And he says yes Lord. And he says go and you're dead. And he says do you believe in my son, Jesus Christ, and you're dead. something that happened he transformed you from ignorance to knowledge once we were living in our former ignorance but now we know we are growing in the knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ so he says as obedient children as you're obeying the Word of God something happens we're not going to be conformed to the standard of the world to the former life we we're living we're not going to live that life again so you see transformation is saying is a byproduct of a yielded of a submitted life to the lordship of jesus christ if you're going to be different if your life is going to grow if you're going to mature in your walk with Jesus Christ is going to happen as you yield and obey, as you submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. How are we going to live a life that makes a difference? It's by remembering this, that obedience to the Lord leads to transformation. And then, that because we remember it, Daily, we are reminded, I need to yield to God today. I need to surrender to Him. I need to submit to Him. I need to live for Him. I need to honor Him. Uh, this reaction I was making is not good. I need to stop behaving that way. I need to stop this word I was going to say. I need to keep quiet about this. I need to behave this way because it honors my God. And this is what the Lord has said. And it's good in His eyes. Be brother be your sister who is living a life of a difference how by preparing for action being ready at all times by being sober-minded so you're watchful you're alert but letting the grace of God be the anchor be the hope that you hold on to at all times the grace of God being what reminds you daily as the enemy enemy whispers a lie you're reminded of the grace of god that saved you while you were still a wretched person when circumstances says otherwise you're reminded before jesus christ i was sinking but now he has set my feet upon a rock let that grace remind you and of course also by remembering obedience to jesus christ leads to transformation and lastly as we see this striving striving to live for God and look at what it says verse 15 but as he who called you is holy you need to know who has called you that's very important see because we will respond 
to the one who has called us and the things we do, the life we live, the, the response and reaction we make to things happening in our lives is going to be dependent on the kind of call we have received and who has given that call. And here Peter is reminding us, he who has called you is holy. That means the response we make and give him, that how we behave towards him, the things we do, says has to be in line with who he is. Because he is holy, how we behave, how we react, our character, our conduct, the words that come out of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, the thoughts of our minds, all has to be something that is in line with the holy God. Because he who has called us is holy, so we ought to live that way strive to be that so it says but as he who called you is holy you also be holy in all your conduct why because it's written you shall be holy for i am holy why do we strive why should we strive to be holy why should we strive to live for god Live for the Lord literally. One, it's because He's holy. That's why we should strive to honor Him. Two, it's because He called us. Because it says, as He who called you, it was God who called us. We did not call Him. We did not go to Him. He came to us. We did not choose Him. We, he chose us. And Jesus said, I chose you first. Why should we strive to live for Him? Why should we live to honor Him? Why should we be concerned about the words that come out of our mouth, about the thoughts in our hearts, about the meditations and the things that we pour inside us? Because He is holy. Because He called us. So how do we do that? How do we live for God? By honoring Him in our conducts, by imitating Him. Remembering this, the Bible tells us in Romans 8.29, God's desire, our Father's desire for each and every one of us is to make us become like His Son. But like Paul wrote to believers in Philippi, we are called to this action. We are called to live and, and bring about this faith, to work out this salvation not in our own strength, not in our own wisdom, not in our own ability, but by relying on God because He says, because it is He who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. So even as Peter is saying, we should strive to be holy as you who call us is holy, there's still a reminder that this is not going to be something that you will do by yourself is not going to be possible if you're trying to make it on your own. But as we rely on Him, as we obey Him, as we live in conscious awareness of, I am a child of God, the Word of God says this, and I'm going to honor Him, I'm going to obey Him, God has said this, I'm going to live that way. I, as a child of God, I need to respond this way. That is how that happens. So how are we going to live a life of a difference? Here it is. One, you need to prepare for action. It says prepare your mind for action. And that means take a discipline. It's going to require discipline. It's going to require sacrifice. You're going to need to prioritize. Gird your mind. Gird the things that you fill in. Because whatever goes in is what comes out. How are we going to do that? How are we going to live a life of a difference that means something in the kingdom of God by being sober-minded, by being alert, by being watchful at all times? Because the enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion. And Peter says, stand firm in your faith. James says, resist him, standing firm, and he will flee. Be sober-minded, be watchful, be alert. How are we going to live a life of a difference? By letting the grace of God be our hope. By letting the grace of God be the anchor that we're holding on to. Being the rock that we stand. How are we going to do that? How are we going to live a life of a difference? By remembering that obedience to the Lord 
brings about transformation. And as we obey him, we are reminded of this thing. We've been called to action. We'll be called to something else because he's already changed us from being who we used to be to being his children, from being dead people to being people who are alive today, from being people who are ignorant to being people who are growing and maturing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How are we going to live a life of a difference? By striving to live for our Savior. How do we do that? By honoring Him in our conducts, by imitating Him. Jesus said over and over and over when you read throughout the gospel to His disciples, He said, I have set for you an example. I'm doing this so that you can see and know. I've left for you an example that you follow. I've left for you a footstep that you follow in it. That's how we live. Those are the things that we need to imitate and emulate and take in for ourselves. But why should we do that? Because He will call us His holy. Because He has called us. Because He loves us. Because His grace is what sustains us. I want to say this. I, I said it already. But I want to say this before we pray. When nothing seems to make sense in your life, don't quit. Remember the grace that saved you. Because it is that same grace that is sustaining you. And let that give you hope. Let that remind and encourage you. And the good news is hope does not disappoint us. Why? Because God has poured His Spirit into our hearts. And it's because of that same Spirit that we call Him Father. Friends, let's be people who are living a life with a difference. Let us be people who are standing for something. Don't let life pass you by because you're being, drifting this way and that way and following the waves and just following the wind. And whatever people are going, you're going. Whatever people stop, you stop. Let's not be like that. Let it be said, in this generation where the people are doubting everything, where, the, where people are denying the existence of God, denying the humanity of Christ, denying the death of Christ, denying the existence of our Father, let it be said that there's, there's a certain group that these people who have stood their ground, they know who they are, their identity is built on something that is not from this world. Their hope is built not on what the world offers, but on something that is eternal on someone that who is eternal, on God himself. Let it be said, despite the fact that the world is in chaos, those ones are standing firm. They are not moved because they know who they are and they've made up their mind. They're going to live lives that matters. They're going to live lives with a difference because they have been called by God who has made a difference in their life. May God bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you. May He guide you as you rise up from your houses, as you walk about, as you get back. Remember this. The grace of God that saved you is the same grace that is sustaining you. Live a life with a difference. May God bless you. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the call that you've given to us. Thank you for your grace that sustains us. God, I pray that we'll live that life. I pray that we'll decide today, if we're already not decided, that we'll decide today, we'll make up our mind today and say we're going to live for God, we're going to live for truth, no matter what happens. Because you who called us as holy, you who called us as powerful, you called us as able, more than able, to bring about the things you said you will do. And help us live for your glory and you alone. In your precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you and thank you for your time. I'll see you on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. as we continue studying the word of God one verse at a time. Have a great week. And let's join Adria on Akashi Community Church page.
for worship. Blessings to you.